Hello, beloveds. How are you doing today? Welcome, new subscribers. Thank you, subscribers, for all your likes and shares and support. I really appreciate you. I said I would come here and I would talk about more about hoodoo and baths and how they work and how you can get them to work with you. And so I want to give you a basic foundation to work with so you can ensure you'll get the results. The first thing I start helping me is I got my books. Okay, this is a book by Scott Cunningham, Incense, Oils, and Brews. This is good for helping me make my oil infusions, all my condition oils. This book is good for that. Also, making mojo bags, too, if you're interested in that. I'm probably going to start making mo mojo bags later because I'm learning more about that as I go. I don't want to make different types of mojo bags for different conditions. But this is a good book for that. You don't have to learn all these herbs on your own. Okay, it's okay to keep books around. I don't we don't expect you to learn all this overnight. Okay. When I'm working with herbs, and this is when I make my bath teas, I use this a lot making my bath teas. This is an excellent book uh, for making your bath teas. Okay, again, it's got pictures in here. Of the herbs and things and what they're used for if they're masculine if they're feminine you know this is a really good book you guys they tell you what everything is give you a black and white picture of it so I do recommend it and uh, you see I use it all the time because I have bookmarks all through here where I use it all the time this one as well especially when I'm constructing my oils the first thing we need to learn, and you've heard me say it probably in the last video, I need to get you to understand that because it took me a while to understand that because we just have not been taught to connect with nature in that way. We have not taught to that we are a reflection of, of nature and that our ancestors had this intimate relationship with nature and the fact that the plants and the vegetation around us were some of our first ancestors. They were the first living organisms that were here on this planet. And they aided our ancestors who were humans to sustain physical lives here. Okay, so when we go out and we gain our relationships with these plants, what we're doing is piggyback off the relationship they had with our, our ancestors. And many times when the plant, you communicate with that plant, they can already see your ancestors in you. Again, everything is alive. Everything is energy. And when you're reaching with the plant, uh, working with the plant kingdom, you're working with these spirits. You're working with these energies. Okay. Uh, I don't know if I posted it here, but I po certainly posted it on my social media pages. But this girl, she goes out in her backyard. I mean, and you can find them all over TikTok. You can go to TikTok and find this, but I'm going to post it here. This girl went outside and the she asked the plant to touch her and it touched her. Okay. We're seeing evidence of these trees walking and communicating with humans now. They want to work with us. We simply need to validate them and acknowledge them. And they are happy to work with us once we validate them. Okay, this is a science. Everything around you is alive. Everything is energy. Everything, and once you understand that magic, you'll see magic all around you. Once you understand that everything is alive and it can be used in any type of work that you want to do. Anything in nature. Everything is energy. Okay, so let me show you this clip of this young lady that has this experience with this tree. Again, everything is alive. The ancestors showed me this in meditation. I had a vivid meditation experience where the ancestors took me to plant kingdom and these plants and trees were talking to me and this huge plants. It was so surreal. He talks to me and say, we are real. We are alive. And he was so as a matter of a fact, and he was all up in my face. 
And I was like, okay, I get it. You are alive. Not long after that, see, the ancestors always do me like that. Not long after that, to make sure that I understood that, I start running into these people that were having experiences with trees. Even though I had my own experience with the dandelions in my backyard, like I told you, I was digging one up, accidentally cut, clipped the root, and it, I felt it yell. However, what the ancestors have relayed to me, this natural connection that I have with plants can be contributed to my relationship that I have with cannabis. And what cannabis have explained to me is that all trees and plants are connected through their roots. They communicate with each other. Yes, anything I want to know about plants or anything, I set my intentions with cannabis and I begin to meditate and focus on my intentions. And before I know it, I get this inspirational flow of information. Imageries begin to pop in my mind. And the plant will start to talk to me. Cannabis will speak to you. But what we're doing, we're smoking in big crowds. We're, 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 we're using it recreationally. But when we set our attentions and get by ourselves and moves with the plant, and talk with the plant. It will speak to you. This is why artists use cannabis when they're rapping, when they're writing. Most intellectuals, if they're trying to make a breakthrough and open up their mind and expand their consciousness, they're going to reach for cannabis because it's a subtle, altered state of consciousness that yields a magnitude of results when used in the right way. Again, we have not been taught to use these ethnogens or plants in a way that are enhance our spiritual evolution. And now we're understanding what we thought was magic is actually a spiritual science. It's actually metaphysical science. That everything is around us is a lie. And that we have the ability to use these energies to enhance our lives for healing. I'm going to show you this clip. You tell me what you think. Okay, y'all gotta see this. I just talked to a tree. Yes, I talked to a tree. I saw it on TikTok, so I went to my backyard. And I talked to a tree and it responded to me. And I called my sister. She's not picking up the phone. But I need you guys to see this. Side of me, there's nothing on the side of me, nothing above me. Okay, tree, if you can hear me, touch my shoulder. <laughs> okay, tree, did you guys see that? If you can hear me, touch my shoulder. Thank you, tree, if you can hear me, touch my shoulder. <laughs> okay, you saw the clip when the tree touched the young lady on her shoulder. I know that was something to see. That was something to see. Try seeing it in meditation. That was surreal to me. What we need to understand, and which will help you better understand hoodoo, because before I get into the water, because we're going to talk about water too, because I want you to understand how these spiritual baths work and what hoodoo really is. And so when we look at hoodoo, as you, you saw in my last video, uh, it's magic passed on by the family, but it's also an ancient magic that was passed on to us by our most ancient ancestors, which were plants, water, and the herbs and vegetation, nature all around them. And so when we look at hoodoo, 
a lot of people get in hoodoo and they we want to jump in there we want to do our magic spells and we want to get into the to the the core stuff without doing the cleansing work that we need to do the guidance work that we need to do before we even jump into magic before we even jump into trying to do candle work and all those other things the first thing you want to do before you do anything is get a reading get a ring and find out do you need to do that money work do you need to do it or are you just spending carelessly you need guidance because you may not even need to do the money work you probably need to watch how you're spending now if you do get a yes hey go ahead and do the money work you can you can bring that extra energy in. you can use that if you do get a yes first thing you need to do go ahead and take a cleansing bath you need to strip all that other stuff off of you so you can get ready to get that magic going we're going to get all the gook off of us and when we start doing our before we start our candle magic we're going to start off with a money bath we're going to already start calling that energy in, start harnessing that energy in. we're going to already start uh calling it in so when we first light our candle we already got that we got it already going okay we've already set the intentions so we're powered up we have the energy and we can go on the second day, we're going to do that money bath again. You're going to do that money bath again and harness it again. Again, we want to we want to stretch it out and lock it down. We want to make sure we get results. This is why we do things in th three, fives, and seven in Hoodoo to get the results that you want. It is not a one-time thing. This is work. That's why it's called work, root work. It's work to do it. And it takes intentions to do it. Mindfulness, awareness to do this kind of work. So you're going to do that 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 bath three days in a work row. You're going to be quoting Psalms. Psalms are a good, good to quote because in between the Psalms, you can put your power in between the verses. You can say your powers and intentions in, in between the verses because these Psalms, which are spells or whatever you want to call them, they have so much psychic energy and they help carry your intentions, your words of power. They amplify it. Okay, so you want to take your bath in three, fives, or sevens. That's usually uh, how who do work. Now, for extent, more extensive cases, I've known them to go on for 13 days. That's Those are the, the numbers that we use in who do for transformation, change. You know, all the numbers, they mean something. But for uh, uh, if, to keep it basic, start off with three days. And if, it, if you don't see any results... In three days, then start it back over again. Start it back over again until you get the results that you want. Again, we are we are crafting, tapping into our own power. So it may take trial and error until you find how to tap into your power to get the results that you want. Okay, I hope that made sense to you. Now, Hoodoo was set up again for healing transformation protection justice success that's what who do was it originally set up for now our family they crafted around it and they had their own magic to add to it so that's why you can see it being passed from family to family when they crafted it as their own and it got passed on because there's some things my grandmother did that she passed on to us some things that she did that we didn't learn in church. She was doing some of these things on her own. My mom was even taking me to hoodoo workers. That's why I didn't understand why she was so upset uh, when I got into this because she was taking me to hoodoo workers. She took me to this woman that lived in North Little Rock in Dixie. And this woman could tell if you were pregnant just by looking at your throat. She used to make up all these medicines. She was a, some type of medicine woman, a shaman woman. But she used to make up these concoctions and stuff. And my mama would take them to the pharmacy and they would get them filled. Like she was always, you know, she was all, even though she went to church, she still was very spiritual. And I don't see how did she didn't think that I would go into this. We had books laying around the house about ESP, um, metaphysics. 
She read her Bible, but we also she also had these other books too that I was highly interested in. Of course, I was having these experiences, and so was she. Experiences that the church wasn't talking about. The Bible wasn't really giving us more much insight on. So she was forced to go outside and try to define her experiences. And me as a child having these experiences, it was helping me understand a little bit about what was going on with these dreams and visions that I was having, these experiences that I was having. And it also helped me understand my future spiritual experiences before they start happening. It made me more a little bit more accepting of them. Okay, now why don't I talk about water? And and water is alive. Let's get this, you know, water is alive. Scientists have did studies on using words of power with water and watching the frequency and the molecule shapes of the water change. So we already know that sound affects water. In hoodoo, there's a ritual where they write affirmations on a piece of paper and stick it in water, wait till it absorbs in the water, and then they drink it. Yes. Okay. So I want you to watch this clip about this, how this science did a study experiment on water. And we'll come back and talk about that. Do you ever bless your water before you drink it? After watching this video, you may consider starting. Dr. Marisu Emoto spent his entire life studying the scientific evidence of how the molecular structure in water transforms when it's exposed to human words, thoughts, sounds, and intention. Here are a few of the words and the molecular structures from his studies. He also studied how sounds affect water, and so here is the difference between Mozart and heavy metal. Another part of his research shows us. Okay, well, you saw the clip by water. Okay, you saw it for yourself. Again, everything is alive. I can't emphasize this enough, beloved. I can't. I know it's hard to understand, but what helped me understand, and what the ancestors uh, helped me uh, understand, because I do a lot of meditation, and a lot of my information and insights. I learned from the ancestors is through meditation. And what they told me is that that world, when you go into meditation, that world is real. It is, in fact, it is more real than this world because that's where everything came from. It came from that state. Okay? So that world is creating this world the spiritual world is creating the physical world that you are experiencing and i know that's hard to believe it's hard to believe but the ancestors broke it down that simple to me that yes this experience is real but you guys don't validate that you want to go the ego says that oh this is not really happening this is not logical you know that's why it's good to go ahead and have the experience. And when you have the experience, the ancestors will back that up with information. Information will just start coming to you. It will start flowing your way. They will confirm the, the knowledge that they have shared with you. But you must stay open for it. And don't let ego get in the way. Okay? So now that you saw the water, that's why it's so important when you get in your tub. And you start your spiritual bath to already start saying affirmations. Already start playing your music, raising the frequency on the water. Raising the frequency. I mean, you can do this. because honey, I have been in that bathtub and I have church up in there. You hear me? I instantly start pray, playing some of the old gospel music my grandmother played. I'll play some meditation affirmation music uh, sounds to really start... Uh, setting my intentions in that water i put my oils in there and i take that bath tea bag and i blow smoke on it rum on it whiskey on it or vodka whatever i have and i instantly start talking to those herbs thanking them for all the healing energies and all the success and things that they're going to bring in my life before i put it in that tub and then i take my hand 
and I stir that water, depending on if I'm trying to bring some in, I stir clockwise and I start talking to the water, asking the water to open the doors of trans, open the portals of transformation and change that I want to see in my life. I just start stirring it and talking to it, setting my intentions. And I make sure that I put candles, make sure, because this is important. Make sure that you're putting candles on each side of the tub because, again, light you're lighting the way. You're lighting the way to these portals. You're activating the portals when you light these candles on each end of the tub. Okay, you want to make sure it's lit. If you have any prayers that you want to say in there, say those prayers. We want to stay in that tub at least 10 to 15 minutes. And we do not want to dry when we get off. We don't want to dry. Uh, if you're worried about drying, put a little oil in there if you want to. That'll help you dry a little quicker and help those oils and, and, and water and herbs really set in the skin to get that energy and magic working, working okay? And again, if you don't get any results from your bath, again, do it again. We don't know how much energy that we have to pull away from us. To harness the energy we need to get the desire that we want. If that makes sense to you. Now I've made this very, very simple about the spiritual bath. This is a science. Okay, this is a spiritual science that our ancestors used for thousands and thousands and thousands of years. That worked for them. And it will work for you too. It works for me. I've been going through some things here lately. And had it not been for my spiritual baths. The ancestors said you need to go take a bath. You need to take a spiritual bath. And right after I, I take that spiritual bath. I feel such a release. I'm not feeling down and depressed. Or oppressed. After I take that bath. And then I start seeing the results of that bath after I take it in my physical form because I've called those energies in my space. Okay, now I hope this video helped you. I hope it gave you some insight on how hoodoo works and how a spiritual bath works and how important they are and how they can enhance your life. Okay, and how hoodoo is just step, it steps to this. You can't just rush off doing things. Things need to be done in a way that will get you results. There has to be some type of order to it. That's how our ancestors did. It has to be ordered to it some sort of way. It can be easy, but it needs to have order and intentions with it. Okay? I hope that helped you. Like, love, namaste, ashe, love one.